living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own gain. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep, keep us selfish, keep us sedated. Much for joining me. Welcome to the show. It is Toward Anarchy. I am your host, Michael Storm. We're live right here on the Republic Broadcasting Network, as we are every Sunday. This Sunday just happens to be Sunday, December 15th. And if you want to play along, you can go to towardanarchy.com and check it out. You can see, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see, let me grab a drink of the coffee here. Got the coffee ready. Got my cigar fired up here. And it's freezing cold outside. There's six inches of snow that popped up overnight. Uh, I'm in Kansas, in case you hadn't hadn't heard that already. I'm I'm in Topeka, Kansas, so I'm about the middle of Kansas, basically, and it, it's very very cold. And I hear the roads are closed out of town uh, unless I take the back roads. I-70 apparently is closed uh, just a little further down the road in a little town called Manhattan, the Little Apple, not to be confused with the Big Apple. That's where I went to college at K State. Uh, for a little while, my wife actually graduated from there. I didn't. I didn't. I hung around and uh, spent too much time hanging out in bars and uh, drinking and playing rock and roll music and just having too much of a good time getting tattoos and doing things like that instead of um, spending my time studying. Actually, I, I didn't want to. I didn't like it. I was so disappointed in it when I uh, when I went to K State. I was so disappointed in the atmosphere. I was disappointed in the classes that they offered, and I was kind of stuck in it you know how that is you go and you get a loan or and, and i did i got a loan from a bank and uh and then i had uh you know some uh uh grants and things like that from my my uh community college uh, i went to community college to do this to do the radio thing i uh i found the i know it sounds a little funny community college oh anybody could go well yeah because it is community it's community trying to educate each other i always found that weird the the disdain for the idea of going to a community college as if there's something wrong with going to a community college but it, it, to to prove my point uh, I went to Colby Community College, Colby, Kansas, and uh, it was the number one radio program in the nation. Above all uh, four-year schools, your uh, your Rhodes Scholars, you know, K State Rhodes Scholar uh, College, right there. Uh, above all of them, all of them, and so I I decided to go to that program specifically because of its success, its proven success, and. Uh, Gosh, man, if I think about it, everybody's kind of – everybody's doing something. Just about everybody that I remember uh, from back then is doing something. Not not everybody. There's a couple people I, I now that I think about it. I guess uh, uh, we, got, we got a truck driver. We got one guy who's hosting his own show for um, – Oh, which network is it? it's one of the one of the cable networks it's a it's a hunting show it's a duck hunting show mostly uh ronnie phillips i i don't know if, if you're into that thing you may know who he is uh um brady is uh hosting a top 50 market uh radio i've i've been hosted top 50 markets in radio uh jb works as a consultant for radio i mean there's all these all these people that were in and around the program and and have done it by the the instructor at the time uh is now a, a lead instructor at uh uh in uh Kentucky at a college there um man yeah just everybody out of it is just it, it's just doing something. They're out there doing their thing. It was just a big deal. So it was really cool to get to participate in that. And that's a sort of a long end around just saying, hey, I'm back here doing my thing. That's what I'm doing. And uh, as I was saying, just, just go up to the website because the point of this all comes down to – a sharing and it's one of it's been another one of these weeks where I've looked at the world and I've said it, there's too much there's there's just so much going on out there in the world and you can't keep up with it all I, I and what made me think of that was this because I get this thing the New York Times has a a free service you know had to entirely pay for all of their service and I get this email every day and I can go read x number of 
articles without having to actually pay. And it's something I don't know how long they've been doing it. It's only recently that I've been doing it. And so I get this this brief every day from them, and I think about it. I kept getting it all this week, and I, I almost never look at it because there's nothing in it that I care about. And and that's what I think about this. This is you know this is a sort of news and information indicative of the sort of news and information that everybody else is concerned with. And so I thought I'd look today at the one they sent me. Your morning briefing, Sunday, December fifteenth, from the New York Times. This is what everybody else is is talking about, and and that I will have. And there's no chance of that I will ever because I, most of it I don't even care about. Uh, there's nothing I could do about it. Uh, my talking about it won't change it. I know less about it than most people. I spend my time studying and learning other more important things. Um, but let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. Let's see if I'm missing something. Uh, House of Representatives set to taste, hit, take historic vote. Of course, that's about uh, impeachment, abusing his uh, power of OBS office and obstructing Congress. Uh, you know I don't care about that. That's all that political game. means nothing. Uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson decisive win. Uh, all but ensured Britain's departure from the European Union. So I guess, uh, depending on what side of that issue you're on, that's a good deal. I, I mean, I, don't know, I, I have no... I have no dog in the fight. I, I, these unions, these things, they're so fake. They're, they're so fragile, and there's, they're built around uh, following the rules that somebody somewhere else has decided that the rest of us need to follow, and it just doesn't work. It's not, it's not what we do around here, that's for sure. Across the Atlantic, uh, Democratic presidential candidates were watching the results of Britain's election closely. Was it a harbinger of a second term for President Trump? Eh, talking about Bloomberg and his run and the fact that he wasn't able to make it for the next debate because he doesn't qualify for it. Uh, stabbing of an 18-year-old Barnard College student in a park near campus has jarred New York City. See, this wouldn't be a national story if the New York Times wasn't a, a national newspaper. Um, a 13-year-old and a 14-year-old, though, amongst the individuals who stabbed and killed uh, Tessa Majors, a first-year college student from Virginia, just happened to be walking through the park, and they tried to rob her. Uh, let's see, five. We have two video investigations exam examining the future of technology, a tank that drives itself. This is interesting. A drone that picks its own target. A machine gun with facial recognition software. Artificial intelligence is defining the next wave of warfare. I've been talking about a little bit about this. Just I've been sharing some links, I guess, more than talking about it. Our reporters spoke with experts around the world in Killing in the Age of Algorithms, a 20-minute documentary. And then they said there was another one. What was the other one? Does it say? It doesn't say. Uh, what would Bangkok be without its fragrant street food scene? That might be kind of fun. The world wants more Danish TV than Denmark can handle. Oh, my God. Um, winning the Heisman. In other football news, let's see, Oakland Raiders. I, I'm still playing along. If, you, if you've if you been following along from the beginning, I've been doing that. Uh, I'm still doing it every week, and I still kind of watch a little bit of game. It'll be on in the background sometimes while I'm doing the show. Other times it won't. Um, I've been playing, you know, the NFL fantasy football. It was the first time I'd ever tried it. And and the reason I haven't talked about it is because it's it's something that you obviously it's there's a lot of luck involved, but there's also a lot more study involved that I'm willing to put into it, uh, especially for something that's free, that's a game. It's it's too much work. When it comes to games, I I want simple, I want easy, I want to jump in, I want to start playing. Uh, the newest um one of the newest MMOs online based on the uh, Final Fantasy series. Um, I started playing it here a couple of weeks ago. It, I think it just came out of beta. And uh, <laughs> I, I played for 45 minutes, and it's, it's not even technically out of the tutorial at this point. I just like, come on, are you kidding me? That's just too much. I just want to get in, and I want to hack some stuff up, and I want to collect some gold, and I want to advance my character to the next level. Yeah, looking at my 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 score, I have one team that's four and ten. I have another team that is oh, load up, jeez, take your time. Uh, eight and six, and expected to lose today. And then I have another team that's like ten and four. And it's really, really close, but it's just hit and miss. It's totally hit and miss because these three teams represent 
a random computer pick, a semi-educated pick by myself, and then a uh, random pick by myself. And uh, to my own credit, the semi-educated pick is actually, oh, wow, it actually stepped up. It's actually expected to win. That's kind of cool. Um, 42 to a night. Man, that guy is, wow, that's terrible. Uh, no, 116 expected points, 42 already made, 110 uh, expected, 19 already made for the other guy. He's 10 and 4, too. Wow. I, I may have a competitive team come the end of the season. It's kind of cool, but it's it's been so much more work that I'm worth that, that it's worth putting into it, and so I'm not going to uh, talk about it at all. Uh, it just is not. I, I haven't spent the time in it. Uh, yes, we will call Brittany on Skype. I should get to that. Yeah, yeah, you bet we will. That's the beauty of doing 50 things at once. We Yes, we will definitely hit you up here shortly. <clears throat> so let me tell you about that. I had to get a drink. I already mentioned, if you want to play along, follow along. TowardAnarchy.com. It's Sunday, December 15th. If you have to dig through the archive to pull it up, that's where you'll find it. You'll notice I'm slowly but surely beginning to make those changes. I'm about to add 2020 in there. I've, I have it all done on my side, on the computer side. It hasn't been uploaded to the website yet. And so what we see when you get there, if you click on the front page of TowardAnarchy.com, you see Sunday, December 15th right up there. If it's live, if you're with me right now, Brittany Schaefer, archist, an anarchist, <laughs> Arthur, uh, author. Um, is that a combination of anarchist and author? Uh, yeah. Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, the fantastical contraption. She mentioned it last time she was on the show. She's a returning guest, I think. The first, technically? Yeah. Uh, no, no, David Weichel's our first returning guest. We have to get him back on here. There's a bunch of gun stuff that we got to talk about. Um, Sunday, December 15th, we'll talk about her book. Uh, there's a link to it there. There's also another link to an article that she wrote this week uh, about 16 other children's books that she didn't know were anti-authoritarian. Also, some interesting things I found. Law enforcement's new best friend. This is something that she was talking about this week, uh, Brittany Schaefer. And I kept seeing her talking about different things. I, it was interesting. I caught her first talking about this this next link, the link after that one. Wired Magazine for 1996 this is an article about the Transparent Society. And it's about private networks of cameras and uh, information sharing uh, versus public and and you got you have to read the whole thing it's a long article jump in there and read the whole thing see if it if it interests you but the it it's becoming a reality and so it was interesting that i saw her asking somebody for this information and they came up with it they remembered what the article was and they found the link for it. and then like two seconds later the story pops up uh from vice uh law enforcement's new best friend Private camera networks like Ring, that's that's what I said about it anyway. I guess theirs is F-Crime Inside Ring's quest to become law enforcement's best friend. Amazon's surveillance company has seeped into hundreds of American communities by throwing parties for police and giving them free devices. So these things are seeping into your neighborhoods seemingly innocuously, but they're not because these are not controlled by us. The information is being shared. They're pitching it to uh, police and authoritarians as a way to track people's movements, private people's movements. Um, it's it's pretty scary, actually, what they're doing with it. So there's a couple links there for you. Sunday, December 15th, TowardAnarchy.com. They'll be up there. A study of bone marrow transplants shows donor DNA takes over. That was an interesting article. Another, this is, again, another example of just so many crazy things happening out there. There's this impeachment and there's all of these things with technology and there's um, – uh, they're moving to – there's a big push in technology right now moving towards facial recognition, and I've talked about that before, how that's a horrible, horrible idea. And they're trying to use it to – as part of uh, Internet ID and how they're eventually going to get to the point where you won't be able to get on the Internet without – uh, identification. You'll have to identify yourself to get on the internet. It may take a long time for them to do that, uh, but they're they're certainly making it harder and harder uh, to use your devices without 
you actively knowing that they're paying attention to you. This I, I've been sharing this thread. If you go back in the archive and you just look over the archive of the last month or two, there's these articles, these links that I've been sharing. It's about this technology and it's about Google and it's about your medical records and it's about your face and it's about access to your computers and all of these things that uh, that are all happening from all these different places that are basically attacking your ability to control your own data and to have access to uh, online information of all types. It, it's happening from uh, across the board with Google cracking down and demonetizing sites and even pulling them off of, of the YouTube and places like Twitter and even Facebook. I know you know this. You must know this. If you don't know this by now, that maybe you haven't been paying attention, maybe, maybe – Maybe you don't care. Uh, people like Alex Jones, just to name you know, sort of the biggest one that you, you probably would know off the top of your head. There's many, many others from people that are talking about – I used to do this myself. They're talking about like new toys, get new toys in when I ran a toy store and a comic book store. Uh, just for a short period of time, I would do this where I would uh, record video of a toy, me opening a toy and checking it out. and Just a, a short video. Not really me judging it or anything like that. It was more to show it off uh, to be able to sell it. This is what you get when you open your package. Ooh, you get to see it before you get your package, that kind of thing. And uh, even people like that just talking about new product and, and not doing even anything necessarily political or um, or using anybody's property in in any negative way. No, no, so no, no more so than anybody being critical of a product and sharing that information. And and these people are are disappearing. These seemingly innocuous people who are just having a little bit of fun. And and if they're disappearing, then you know it's even worse on the other side when it when it gets to political. And and I I hate to even think about. This sort of left wing control of the media because I see, you know, in my whatever you call it, political stance, of course, there's no difference between the left and the right. Uh, it's a matter of uh, who they tend to fund with your tax dollars, business or social projects. It's, it's about it. It's about the only difference between them. And so to say that they have any great control over something is to admit that there's a particular difference in them. Well, there definitely is. There's there's the left-leaning right, and there's the left, 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 uh, all the way socialist, psychotic, control everything uh, left. Those guys, you know, it's, it's that um, they used to tell you that the political line, if you were, if it's just a uh, linear piece – that you're looking at on the left and on the right, those are your your, and then there's somewhere in the middle the libertarians. You get your Democrats on the left, your Republicans on the right, but that's not the real scale. If it's a linear uh, view, a linear graph of it at all, I mean, you're talking about your socialist left, your totalitarian state, your kingships, dictatorships, all the way over there on the left, and then just to the right of that is democracy and republics and and these other um, you know. Uh, Ideas, and then just to the right of that is your your uh, um, the right wing version of those ideas, and then all the way over on the right hand side is anarchy and actual freedom, and and this idea that we come here and we talk about every week, right? That that the world gets along in anarchy every day, whether they realize it or not. That's what we do, and that authority we just don't give it that much concern. So let's take it to the next level and get it out of our lives. We'll be back on Toward Anarchy, and I guess Britney Schaefer is coming up. Joining us here in just a few short minutes, and we will talk about her book, Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, the Fantastical Contraption. And if you go to TowardAnarchy.com, it's Sunday, December 15th. You can follow along there. You can jump in the chat room, hang out with those guys, see what they're chatting about this week. Reach the show. Send me an email. Uh, you can see this cool article if you if you're there on the front page at TowardAnarchy.com. It's the first article on the Toward Anarchy Elsewhere. It's uh, by Michael Howell, guest on the show. He interviewed me uh, for writing 
you know, the written piece and for his website and for his audience, uh, of which he has a large audience. And so it was cool to introduce them. And they're, and they're a lot like you. They're in the Fed guys. They're, uh, you know, maybe still voting a little bit or thinking that that thing kind of works for them or, or you know, hoping, praying that uh, wishing at the altar of the of the vote, uh, you know that that sort of thing, and so it was nice to be able to reach that particular type of audience uh, in a in a new way, and it was fun. It was fun to do. I've always wanted to do them. I, I tried to do them for uh, Cop Block, which is um, I don't know four or five years ago. I tried to do these uh, long form. But they didn't want them. They didn't, they wouldn't, they didn't want to do them. More like the um, uh, Rolling Stone type pieces, which that I got to do this. Hang on. I keep hoping. I keep hoping. And it's not happening. But it, it will happen. It will happen. I'll keep my fingers. I, I know I'm not going to talk about it. I won't do it. I won't put myself in that position. No, the long form sort of Rolling Stone sort of conversational piece. What was I doing? A little bit. You know, uh, I, it, I watched a movie that I hadn't seen before. And it's like. Almost 20 years old. Uh, it's called Almost Famous, and it was about um, uh, uh, Penny Lane. Th- that was the only real character, I guess, in it. Penny Lane was a uh, uh, groupie uh, back in the heyday of rock and roll, sort of early uh, you know, 70s, that kind of thing in there. And they, it was just a great little story about uh, – I, th- I think maybe there's some truth to the writer too uh, as, a, as a writer for Rolling Stone, but um, – it just was a interesting, interesting movie. It's a good movie, and I was surprised I had never seen it before. I actually enjoyed it. I laughed a lot at it. It was very funny, uh, and it was just the the music soundtrack was amazing. Uh, it was just Led Zeppelin and um, uh, oh gosh, uh, Elton John. There was a lot of Elton John. There's some Queen. I just over and over again, just all these amazing '70s rock acts. Um, played throughout the entirety of the of the movie, it, it was just I I really enjoyed. I couldn't believe I hadn't seen it before, and I I looked at it and I thought, all right, I'll give it a click. And I said I saw the picture and I thought, man, isn't that Goldie Hawn? And I, and I thought, no, that don't, no. I looked through the names of Goldie Hawn's kid. That's why it looks like Goldie Hawn. Sunday, December fifteenth, awardanarchy dot com. Uh, Brittany Schaefer joined us in just a couple of minutes. And next week, uh, I was going to have my buddy Winston Smith come in, and, and we were going to talk. We're just going to chat. We're going to catch up. He's actual real friend. But um, he's been busy, and he's not going to be able to do it this weekend. And so it actually worked out. I would, I was already been planning to do this for a while, but I reached out to another friend, friend, a real person, somebody that I actually know, not just somebody that I follow on social media that I, I think I know. Um, somebody that I know that I've had dinner with many times and drank a beer with and, and conversed with and talked with and had, you know tried to save the world even a little bit together you know, in our own sort of way. And so my buddy Douglas Evans, affectionately known as Turtle, is going to join us next week, and he's going to talk to us about beekeeping. Uh, he's been doing this for four or five years now. He's, uh, he goes out and he saves uh, hives that aren't wanted, you know, that would otherwise be destroyed. Um, he's raising some bees of his own. He's, he'll tell us all about it. It's a really interesting story. Uh, and then Oh, what was um, what was next week on the the twenty ninth? We have uh, oh yeah, Matthew Wojcicki. Um, I'm gonna have to ask him how to sp- specifically say his his name, but um, he's another author in this series of of great anarchist and libertarian and voluntarist uh, thinking authors that uh, I'm in I've been bringing to you to let you listen to and check out and decide if you want to to go any further and find out what they're writing about and what they're talking about. We'll do that again today with Brittany Schaefer in just a few minutes. And uh, if, you're, if you're following along up there, I've got a quote for you. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am, not stuck in the middle, but hovering above the entire farcical spectrum, weeping as I behold my fellow man's devotion to political illusion and self-destruction by the great Robert Higgs. As always, the link is up there in a, a retweet, a requote is is not uh, an endorsement, although uh, Robert Higgs is pretty great. I can't get him to come on the show. He doesn't want to do interviews. I've talked to him about it. He, just, he doesn't do interviews. doesn't like to talk about stuff. We'll be back with Brittany Schaefer right here on Toward Anarchy. My hat back on my ears. It's cold here in Kansas. There's six inches of snow on the ground. 
and I actually had to go out. I, I've already had to go out today, and it's it's worse on this side of town than it is on the other side of town. But I took my hat off because I get excited, I get hopped up, and I get, uh, you know, when you turn on the microphone and you get in here and you do your thing, you know that feeling you get. It takes over. It warms you up from the inside out, and I had to take my hat off. But then my ears are getting cold in the break. I have no hair. That's the problem. TowardAnarchy.com. Today is Sunday, December 15th, and my guest today is Brittany Schaefer. She is a mother and an anarchist and an author. Uh, her book, Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, a fantastical contraption, is available now. We spoke about it just in passing the last time she was here. It's great to have her back. The link to it is up there on the website if you have to dig through the archive uh, to get there. It's December 15th. And it, there's also another link to an article she wrote this week, 16 children's books that you didn't know were anti-authoritarian. These are just some more things. Uh, you know, I brought you a guest here a couple of weeks back, Connor Boyack, who is the uh, Tuttle Twins author. Uh, he wrote an article. I shared that up there today. It's about this outrage. It's about the, uh, uh, the, the outrage and idols and everything in response to time choosing this Greta Thunberg as the uh, uh, person of the year. And, and it's just <laughs> – I, I hear some snickering going on in the background. Is that you, Brittany? <laughs> no, but to, only in my head. <laughs> Nate, I mean, uh, it's it's great to have you back. Thanks for coming back. And, Thanks. And just, Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime. Uh, it's really a pleasure to talk to you. Um, uh, you know, a- anything interesting going on in your life? Anything new and interesting? Other than, of course, this great new book you've got coming um, out. I mean, that's that's the big thing. Is it it launched recently? It's up on Reedsy Discovery. Um, it's got a Kirkus review, so I'm I'm you know getting it out there. Um, yeah, that's that's the main thing is that, you know, it's finally out there, it's finally launched, so get your copies for Christmas. Um it's you know, I just I just wanna make sure that especially for your audience, people understand that this is absolutely an anti authoritarian book. It's um I hope I'm not hitting people over the head with it, but it's <laughs> it's definitely got it's got those themes in there and it's it's you know, the first in a series, so that's gonna continue. So yeah, if you're looking if you're looking for some anti authoritarian literature for your the kids in your life, um, definitely pick one up. Well, I think this is a good thing because I, I know that this is uh, this audience, the people that we're talking to, their mothers, their fathers, their grandfathers, their grandmothers, and they're looking for ways to introduce these ideas, all these ideas that we talk about here on the show, across the network, the things that you write about in your articles, uh, all of these topics, and they're looking for ways to introduce them to children younger and younger and younger. In fact, I saw um, somebody expressing some uh, concerns about the sort of age that you can introduce certain titles like these to children. So let's talk about that. Um, who's who's it for? Uh, in, in what age range? Who's going to enjoy it the most? That kind of thing. So um, I'm not really sure. And <laughs> all kids are different. So Absolutely. I. I'm thinking of like sort of the Harry Potter age range. So like between eight and 12 is probably sort of in my mind is sort of the strongest group. But that said, I would have loved to read this at 16 or 17. Um, And I, I, you know, some people like to go back as adults and read children's books. So I think there are plenty of adults who will enjoy it too, but it's really aimed at like the eight to it's kind of eight to 12 middle grade range. Um, and yet, you know, there are six year olds who read Harry Potter. There's, you know, there's six year olds who are per- who will be perfectly able to relate to this and, and enjoy it. So it kind of depends on the kid, but that's, that's sort of who I'm aiming at it at. Um, is that, is that sort of group. That seems uh, that seems right. I, that's a very good age to do it. I think I, I found this out. This is something that I've learned in my lifetime. Is that that there are definitely ages in which children are uh, more receptive to learning and accepting new ideas, yeah. and yeah. three and four and five is not necessarily those ages. <laughs> 
<laughs> they have their own ideas of how the world should be run. And well, it's scary because what's happening, and the reason I, 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 the reason that that's actually important is because that's what's happening within our public school system is that they're getting them younger and younger. And my and my wife is a pre K teacher in the public school system, and we see this as a serious problem: is that oh, they're yeah. trying to make these children learn instead of encourage them to to learn they're trying to teach them for yeah, that and at, that's just it i mean because like i i was really lucky i went to a montessori school at that age and the whole idea there is it's founded on the idea that kids want to learn anyway and the best thing you can do is you know provide them the materials and then get out of their way um and i think i feel like what happens in public schools and in a lot of traditional education is they really stamp that down. They stamp down the instinct to engage with the world, you know, on their own, with their own mind, and sort of replace it with this um, kind of respect for authority and um, getting answers from authority. And when you look at look at the adults around you and it just becomes so clear that yeah that's that's what they were taught to do and when you engage in in discussions with people online for example you know there's it's so hard to kind of beat through the argument by authority because that's what they're taught that's that there's there's this sort of beating down of our natural instinct and impulse to engage with information on our own um, and it's, yeah, it's devastating. I just feel like it's, that's one of the, the things that's harmed our culture the most. That's, that's it. Exactly. You said it right there. It's the destruction of that, uh, that desire to learn that children naturally have that innate uh, desire for them to go out and explore the world and figure out how to manipulate the things around them, including the people around them uh-uh. and, uh, to, it, it just to explore the world and understand it better. And, and instead of facilitating that, like the Montessori school system does, uh, the, the standard public school model is just to and it's getting it, it's trickling down it was bad enough when it was you know, third fourth fifth sixth seven you know, all the way up through the higher grades where it's all about testing and about passing yeah. the test as opposed as opposed to actually learning and retaining quality information it's it's going they're trying to get them younger and younger and younger and it's scary mm-hmm. they destroy that desire to learn so early because that's what that's how we create that's how we get creative individuals and in, in diversity and different ideas is by allowing people to uh, come to an understanding about the world around them uh, on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the public school system is just, just the opposite of that. Yeah, it's it's really um, – I mean, thank God for homeschooling. Thank God that's that's really booming. Um, I feel like that's that's one of the things that really gives me hope just for our, for our culture as a whole because – it really is. It, it's so at the core of so much that's wrong um, all around us. Yeah, well, yeah, because it, it's so, it's such a big influence on the children, and 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 there's there's so many problems. I, the the whole entire concept of the public school system from beginning to end is flawed, just because of the fact that that uh, you you shirk the responsibility. It's it's the same problem with with all of government. You're looking for somebody else to do something for you instead of really making an effort to do it yourself. And and that it gets even compounded. This is something that I've found personally. I I I think that one of the okay. Here's what you do: if you're going to adult in this thing, this is for you guys that are coming up, these you, you younger people that are coming up. Let me offer you some suggestions. Don't have children. If you do have children, don't send them to public school. <laughs> if you do send them to public school, make sure that you actually are at home. And yeah. you take them to school and you pick them up because it, if nothing else, you, it, it makes that difference in you suggesting to them that you believe that it's important for whatever reason. I've always talked to my children this way about it. it as long as you're successful at it and as long as you want to do it, it's yours to do. Um, but you're going to have to make these decisions and and don't make me make them for you. Don't make me adult you, you know? <laughs> How old are your, your children? 
So our son is almost 13, um, and we're homeschooling him. Our daughter is 10, um, and we're also homeschooling her. She um, has autism, and so she was she was doing a special needs, like a special ed program in our local, um, actually local public school, um, and then we just weren't happy with, you know, the options beyond preschool, and so we started homeschooling. Um, so, you know, obviously very different needs for the, for the two of them. But, um, and he was, our son was also, was in a Montessori school for a number of years, and um, we just sort of felt he would be, do better in homeschooling. So, yeah, so we're doing that now. That's great. I, I, it's one of those things that more people, more people are catching on to, and I, and I hope that it speaks well to the future. I hope that it's not just running from the collapsed building. <laughs> You know, that as opposed, I, I'm <laughs> hoping that it's walking away to a better place as opposed to, you know, the burning, the building is burning down. Let's get the hell out of here. And and right. I can see that in a lot of cases, I'm sure. But uh, I, I, you know, you just, you never yeah, know. I hope so. I hope so, too. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm hearing more and more from people an awareness that, you know, we need to focus more on building, on rebuilding um, rather than on you know, instead of focusing on the problem and, and, you know, how to, how to either fix government or get rid of government or, you know, instead of having that be the focus to have the focus be on building what it's destroyed, sort yeah. of rebuilding, rebuilding our culture. It's, um, it's a little bit like, um, if you've read Fahrenheit 451 at the end, oh. at the end of that, um, which here I go giving a spoiler. Um, but there's that whole theme of, you know, the, the remnant, you know, the people, who know better, who, who recognize what's been destroyed and who kind of lie quietly for a while until, until society is ripe or until, until there are enough people who are also aware and can start to rebuild. Hey, well, and, 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 that, and I think that the one thing that we're seeing that's different from that now is that nobody's waiting anymore, and that's what I yeah. like about yeah. it. People aren't waiting anymore. Nobody's underground yeah. anymore. And, and it, it, it's funny because... The internet has been such a huge part of this. The openness of information has been such a huge part of this, and it's and it's brought to uh, people like yourself, myself, and everyone around the world, just normal, average people, uh, information that we could probably never have in our lifetimes if it wasn't for it. And yet, when we present that information to certain people, we're 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 told that we are internet educated and that there's no <laughs> value. In that education, right. it's the weirdest damn thing to me. Well, I think the the people who are the the sort of the class of people who who are sort of validated by their credentials um, have been able to sort of get away with that for a long time. You know, just having a credential makes what you say authoritative. And once people have more access to information for themselves, you know, obviously just having access to the information doesn't mean you're right. It doesn't mean that information is right. And it doesn't mean that, you know, it's, it's still not better off. You know, maybe you're probably better off having a degree and studying organic chemistry than getting all your information about it online. But at the same time, if there are people who have the credentials and are, you know, spouting nonsense or are deliberately manipulating the information, then, yeah, somebody without a degree can go in and say, oh, look at this, you know, this, this isn't exact, this actually isn't what, you know, the medical authorities say it is. Um, in fact, it's this. And that is new. You know, we haven't, we haven't had, and, and that's why they're so eager, eager to, to smash it down. I mean, the crazy level of, you know, what Facebook is doing and what Google is doing, the, the blatant censorship, I'm, I'm still just in... I'm in shock over that because it's like, well, how, how, why are people not outraged? How do you get away with this? This is not, you know, it's not the Soviet Union. It's not China. And yet you're able to get away with this outright censorship and, you know, not a lot of people are complaining. So, but that's, that's why they're so eager to do that because I, they do see the threat. 
Well, and I think that that's it, it's always going to be a problem because I, I actually was talking about this a little bit earlier in the show just before you joined, and that's the the control that these gatekeepers have uh, over the information that's coming through to us, and and it seems to be sort of decidedly leftist and decidedly um, authoritarian in its scientific views, and and it's very scary because. Uh, the vaccine issue is going to come up. It has to. Uh, <laughs> it's us talking. It's going to come right. up. Right. Let's get it out there. Uh, you know, what was it? 1869? Is that what the anti vaccination league was? Is that what I would see? That sounds about right. That sounds about right. It's a long time that people have had concerns about vaccines, and it's only a short period of time that that information has been available to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. And. And it's scary to watch authority clamp down on that information, yeah, knowing it how is. dangerous it is. It is, and it's scary to watch them get their mandates put in place. Um, you know, what just happened in New Jersey this past week was was pretty scary. Uh, obviously, what's been going on in California, and what's so the the little ray of sunshine, the the silver lining of the cloud that I'm seeing is that. There and it's the same. It's it's the same thing that's happening with Julian Assange. They're they're becoming so um, blatant in what they're doing in their disregard for the law and their disregard for, in the case of vaccines, you know, representing the people that that they supposedly represent. It's so clear that they represent the pharmaceutical companies, and you know, regardless of, of a person's position on vaccines. That's out in the open now. That's right. that's so easy for anybody to see for themselves. And the same with Julian Assange. Whatever you think of Assange and WikiLeaks, the fact that they are being so lawless in how they're going about prosecuting him um, and you know disregarding their own laws, that's got to make people stop and think and say, well, wait a second, you know, if they can do that here, if they can do that to him, who can't they do that to? And um, I feel like there's an opportunity now, you know, again, we're all sort of in our bubbles and what's happening in social media is pushing it more in that direction. So maybe all I'm seeing is what the people around me, the way the people around me see it. But it just seems to me like there's this great opportunity for an awakening right now as to the illegitimacy of the whole process. Oh, boy, I sure hope you're right. Uh, My guest is Brittany Schaefer, and we are talking, and we will talk some more about her book, Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, the Fantastical Contraption, when we get back here on Toward Anarchy. Oh, 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 no. It's it's Al Gore and Man Bear Pig standing over my shoulder, and I am scared. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of fitting. I just always throw something on the big screen in the in the background just to have it running as as the show is going. And and lately it's been South Park. Although last weekend it was Rambo. Um, at, at South Park and today it's it's uh, it's the Man Bear Pig episode. Al Gore up there is telling the kids about Man Bear Pig. And uh, isn't that kind of fitting for right now? I mean. Uh, what's going on this this past week? <laughs> this is Greta Thun- Thunberg, Thornberg, oh, yeah. <laughs> chosen yeah. as Times Person of the Year. Uh, what a, it, it, I I did this. This is great. Go to towardanarchy.com. It's Sunday, December fifteenth. If you have to go through the archive, but if you're live with me and Brittany Schaefer, my guest. Uh, if you scroll down on the page there, I created this meme. I had to create my own. There were others going around, but I wanted to, you know, I wanted my own personal touch. I was going to throw a president in there, um, but I figured that's too on the nose. So I grabbed a pope and I grabbed Bernanke and, uh, oh, I got uh, Stalin and Hitler. I don't know about the Hitler picture. I don't know if the Hitler picture is actually... Uh, the Time Magazine cover or not, but I can guarantee you the other three are because I took them from the Time website. <laughs> I'm getting a 404 error on that. When I go to the Sunday page, it says, for the meme of the day, file not found. Um, there should, Yeah, you shouldn't be anything to click on. It should it's just... On, maybe it's on my end. Something's weird. Um, Let's see. Huh. And you, which link did you click on? So I just I went to Toward Anarchy and then I went down to the Sunday December eighth link and just oh no no the eighth 
Oh, oh no, no, no. Went to the wrong one. Okay. 15th. Yeah. yeah. Eighth was last week, but now I um, want to know. Oh, okay, okay. So that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, no is, Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> oh, it's, okay. So you saw the the image with Thornberry, yeah, and the, okay, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, that's it's awesome. all the time covers and then Greta in there for the for the people who aren't looking at it. But to explain what she saw, if you weren't listening to last week's show, I created this because this is what will happen if you actually click on a link on my page and it doesn't work at TowardAnarchy.com. This it actually takes you to this and it says the page you are looking for is like authority; it doesn't exist. <laughs> that is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had me worried. No, 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 everything's all right. Everything's good. This is this is awesome, though. This is a great. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this. Please do. Hey, you guys know that's the way this thing works, right? This is a short segment here, and we'll jump back into talking something important after the top of the hour. <laughs> Just we're getting into things right now. We always start talking about something, and then the, the music starts playing. And I love the music, but. It just gets in the way of the talking. <laughs> TowardAnarchy.com, Sunday, December 15th, and you can see exactly what it is we're talking about. If you click back in the archive on the 8th, you can see uh, what Brittany saw and had me freaked out. But if you click on the 15th, uh, the link there to um, uh, AnnabellePickering.com it will tell you about the book and how you can buy that and how you can support her. There's also the article that she wrote. There's some links up there. There's the image of Time Covers with Greta Thunberg as the person of the year this year. And Time's just there. They know how to pick them, let me tell you. We'll come <laughs> back here uh, toward Anarchy with Brett Schaefer. Stick around. This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network. state of consciousness that resembles sleep. The poor and the underclass are growing. Racial justice and human rights are non-existent. We have been lulled into a trance. They have made us indifferent to ourselves, to others. We are focused only on our own gain. That is their primary method of survival. Keep us asleep, keep us self- it is Sunday, December 15th, 2019. We're almost into 2020. It should be fun. I'm so looking forward to uh, a great 2020 because it's been, you know, personally for me, I don't know about the world. The world may fall apart, uh, but my own life uh, has been pretty great in 2019. I'm looking forward to an even better 2020. And every day I look forward to a better day. TowardAnarchy.com. Click on today's date, Sunday, December 15th. And you can see everything that we had to share and that we're talking about today. Well, not everything, but because we're definitely going to be talking about all sorts of stuff in the next half hour, uh, as much as we can squeeze in there and, and, and just try to chat about, because that's what we like to do. We just like to, to chat and converse and work some of these ideas out. And maybe hopefully somebody gets something out of it. And you pick a little something up and. And in this case, hopefully you'll pick up a copy of Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, The Fantastical Contraption. It's the first book in a, a series by uh, author Brittany Schaefer. She's my guest, and she's an anarchist and a mother, and she wrote another article this week called 16 Children's Books You Didn't Know Were Anti-Authoritarian. And you can click on that link also through TowardAnarchy.com by finding us in there Sunday, December 15th. Uh, a bunch of other stuff I shared in there as well as always some links and things. And uh, we, we, we've just been we've been talking about this, that, and the other thing. As you know, we just there's no way to cover all of the stuff that's going on in the world. It's just ridiculous. And I thought to myself this week that why would you even want to try to be <laughs> to keep up with what's going on it's just so much um let's get back to talking a little bit about uh, the book and and so i'm a guy and I'm, I'm kind of a a young guy as it were my age tells you differently but um my brain and the toys surrounding me and the comic books and things like that tell you that i'm a little bit arrested development in there and in that sense i, I enjoy those things uh, but it also means that as a guy, um, I, like, I don't like girl things, 
you know, I want to I want to talk about pirates and I want to talk about superheroes and I want to read about those things. Um, is is, is Annabelle is the main character in the story? How accessible will will the guy and me find a, a story? That's about that's the big question. I think um, it's a fair question. Yeah, it's a totally fair question. Um, I would, you know, some guys are going to love it because it's, you know, it's pirates, it's adventure. I think that, so the adventure really kind of heats up, the, the action part of it really heats up um, more like in the last uh, last quarter of the book. There's there's adventure throughout, but like, it really, I think it really heats up more towards the end. Um, and I think, you know, guys who like adventure, uh, who like pirates, who like, you know, little guy against the state kind of stuff will enjoy that. Um, But I also feel like, so there are other levels to it too. So if you're interested in, um, you know, themes of surveillance and privacy and uh, official control of information. So a big theme is how the government is trying to, you know, dominate the flow of information and control what people learn, what they understand to be, you know, the truth about, you know, what the government is doing and, you know, who their enemies are and all that kind of thing. Um, That's a big theme throughout. So if you're interested in those themes, um, in fact, uh, I was kind of, um, I'm not sort of broadcasting this outside of kind of our audiences, but I'm just going to say, uh, the dedication, I've dedicated it to Ross. So, oh, um, great. yeah. So, and that's because it's just, it's, it's all about what he was doing. It's all about, um, what Julian Assange was doing. It's all, it, it's all about the power of information and why that scares the state and the extent they go to try and control it. Um, and not just inf- information, but, interaction and people people trying to evade the state so if you're interested in those themes i think it'll be very interesting um and i think if you just want a good adventure story i I hope it'll be interesting um but we'll see i mean we'll see you know how much uh young boys pick it up as opposed to young girls um that's you know i have my hopes for it but ultimately the market will will sort of tell us that yeah it always does that's the beauty of the Mm -hmm. market well, I'll, I'll have to give it a read, and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts. I'll let you know what I yeah, think about it. I'm looking to forward hear. to it. I would I, think, yeah, I'd love to hear. I think that um, – what was I going to say? There was something that you had just mentioned that I – mean, did I jot it down? I'm always holding my pencil here and jotting stuff down. As I did, but did was it I, about the state? Well, yeah, it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what it was about? It was specifically about um, something that you were looking for earlier this week, and I shared those links up there, actually, because I found them entirely fascinating. You had put out a request for information about an article that had come out in 1996. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and um, it really impacted me back then. Um, and I just, I always think back to it because it's all about, you know, the question, the question about surveillance and the surveillance state to me, I mean, it's, it's kind of the question about technology generally is, you know, we're not going to, if, if you think we can, you know, take sort of a Luddite approach to it and, you know, just stifle surveillance technology and other kinds of technology that could be dangerous. I don't think that's ever going to work. I think the, the question is, who has, well, two questions, really. Who has access to it? Is it one entity that has access to this technology that allows them to spy on everyone else? Or does everyone have access to it and we can spy on the people who are spying on us um, and trying to control us through technology? And I think that's sort of the core question. The other question, of course, is do we have systems in place that hold people accountable for their actions. And, you know, of course, when you have a monopoly entity, um, you know, making laws and enforcing laws, you know, you don't really have accountability. But I feel like with, with the whole question of surveillance technology and surveillance capability, that's really the question. It's not, you know, is this technology good or is it bad or, oh, should we be scared of it? It's, well, does everyone have access to it? And, do we have a way to hold people accountable if they if they violate people's rights with it? 
And and what was great about that is because I don't I don't even know how it was that I was able to even see the post. It just happened that I saw and and someone responded to you and and found the article and so I shared that article up there from it was from Wired magazine from 1996 and it's a it's a nice big article and they talk about a lot of different aspects of of the future w- that we exist in now it's literally yeah. talking about the reality that we are in now and then so it was about five minutes later that this i don't know it was probably the next day uh, that this this next story came up about law enforcement's uh new best friend the thing from vice did you get a chance to take oh, a look at that when i shared I that I, I didn't i think i think that's one of the things that i bookmarked and never actually read the whole thing so yeah, we'll, you gotta that. go back and read that because it's talking about the the it's talking about exactly what they're talking about in 1996 oh, yeah. and about the possibility of uh, sort of cameras everywhere and that particular information being in control uh, in the, the the different types of societies that they laid out in the Wired article. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we're headed towards. So yeah, it's I mean, it's yeah. a reality. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's pretty crazy. I, the, for everybody that's wondering the conversation that we're having, TowardAnarchy.com, uh, Sunday, December 15th. Those those links are there under the also section, I guess, if you will, just under the information about my guest, Brittany Schaefer, and the links to uh, her book, Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, to the fantastical contraption, uh, and that article she wrote this week as well. The, those other links are there. Uh, and, and I tell you, it might pay... It might pay to read those and understand what's going on and uh, uh, understand the danger, the potential danger that this provides as we get further and further. We were talking earlier about the idea that there are gatekeepers and that there's that, that they're gatekeeping this magical place of information this new uh library at alexandria uh you know this that is the internet that has all this information they're you know they're standing outside with the torches trying to burn it down or at least waving the torches trying to keep the normal people from being able to get into it by uh altering the technology altering the results that you get from any given search depending on what search engine you're using but also in uh, making it so that only certain people have access to the information. Mm-hmm. The the biggest push, one of the things that, that I've been talking about here has been the underlying thread in the show lately is just uh, the uh, all these things that have been happening in technology. The, another mention of technology stuff in their study of bone marrow transplant shows that donor DNA takes over. So just all these crazy things. So what was it this week that um, um, Chimera... Uh, pig monkey did you see that no i, I missed all this stuff you didn't, no, I you didn't, didn't see, see what I, oh gosh let me see if i could do i'll pull it up real quick uh chimera pig monkey uh it just happened in china this week jeez oh, i'm not sure i want to know yeah uh first ever pig monkey chimera is born in chinese lab uh, let's see, we'll do the popular mechanics, not that I necessarily trust them any more than I trust anyone, especially no. after their 9-11 debacle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, two pigs with monkey cells born in China. They only lived for a week, but they mark another step toward growing human organs in animals. Uh, two pigs with monkey cells born after research gene- researchers genetically modified Sinomongulus monkey cells in vitro. The research was published in the scientific journal Protein and Cell. After a week, they died of unknown causes. A uh, key laboratory of stem cell and reproductive biology in Beijing are planning to try this again with more monkey cells. The end goal is to grow human organs inside animals for use in transplants. I'm not sure that's the only end goal. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that just gets, that stuff gets scary. Um, Where where do you think they're going with that? uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, maybe it's good news for all the Chinese prisoners. Um, Obviously there's, there's a huge, there's a huge organ market. Um, And yeah, that, I mean, on the, on the one hand, it'd be great if, if we could grow human organs, you know, outside of human bodies, that would, that would solve a lot of problems. Um, it just, I just, I don't know, my mind just goes to them, you know, developing superhuman warriors and, mm. you know, I mean, 
it really brings up the question of, um, you know, the same question that Philip K. Dick is always asking about, you know, or that everyone in sci-fi is always asking about cyborgs and rights and, you know, what's human and what's not human. We're getting to that point, not so much, not so much in this case with cyborgs, but, um, you know, what happens if people start, you know, developing quasi-human creatures? You know, how do we, you know, how do you not give those creatures, how do you not acknowledge their rights? And then, you know, that opens up a whole other can of worms as far as, well, what about other creatures that aren't quite human but that are close and... um you know, and I'm not even going to pretend to have answers to that, but it just it just brings up a whole bunch of really interesting questions. Oh gosh, well, and and here's the thing: it seems like there's a lot of other ways, maybe stem cells, and we've already. I think they, I, I think they've pretty well proven that they can print um, uh, things, hu- uh, biology. If they yeah. have a, a pool of, of material to, to print from, there has to be. That's why the that's a, for those that are asking and want to know about transporting and transporters and things like that. How are you going to get the physical thing from place to place? That's the, the it can't it can't already be there and it can't be reassembled without being there. So you have to figure out how to get. The, but they but they know that they can do it on it from a pool of. Uh, I don't know what. I don't even want to know what you. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that I found out here recently, there's this documentary that I have to go back and watch. I, j- I jotted it down as I do a, on a bunch of these things, and it's about um, um, people who are um, uh, bioengineering themselves. And I don't just mean people who are playing around with plug-in uh, computers. That, you know, they've been able to control the uh, the mouse cursor and, and rudimentary computer controls and things like that with the mind for a long time. Uh, but yeah. these are people that are sort of in their back room messing with their DNA. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so it's a thing now that like the guy down the street isn't cooking meth. He's <laughs> cooking. Uh, he's cooking stem cells to 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 figure out how to cure his disease or whatever, or to help his buddy. Or say, it's it's wow. a thing, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, and and that's what I'm talking about. This this everything's exploding in this. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're watching. We're in the midst of watching uh, the biggest authoritarian machine in 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 the history of the world try to clamp down on information. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, I'm, I'm relieved to hear it's the guy down the street doing that and not, you know, just the guys who are part of that authoritarian machine. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the battle we're in. That's like the biggest, and I, and I feel like it's a small number of us who recognize that, but that is, that is the war right now. It's the battle for, um, you know, freedom of, of information or not, um, and, and uh, speech and expression and all that. But well, for for what anyone thinks of the likes of Alex Jones, I mean, he's been way in front of this thing for a long time yeah, about yeah. what would happen, about what we're going through right now. And a lot of these things, the chimera that we just talked about, <laughs> the vaccines, the time covers, the popes. The, I mean, <laughs> it's too bad that he's still a statist after all this. Yeah, yeah. Well, He'd that's, be a that's... great voice for the anarchist movement if he would yeah, just stop. he's not the only one. Um, <laughs> Isn't there? It's so well, even like Glenn Beck and, and some mm-hmm. people like that that, that they're just, uh, Michael Malice is another one that it's just yeah. like, figure it out, buddy. The only yeah. thing you haven't figured out is that you're still voting. Right, right. Yeah, I was, I'm thinking Caitlin Johnstone, who I love on so many things, and mm-hmm. yet you know, she still thinks taxation's okay. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like we're and I don't know, maybe this is the the crazy optimist in me, but I just feel like we're at such a we're at such a close point to just to pe- people just seem so they they get so much now. They're they're seeing so much of the illegitimacy of it and the 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 workings of how the state works. They're I feel like how the the nature of the state and how it functions and how it manipulates us and all that stuff more, so many more people are aware of that and are so articulated about about it, and 
really get it. And I just feel like we're, you know, they, the next they just they have they're ready to pop. You know, they're just they're they're ready to go because it's just how can you how can you just sit there at that point and not get to the next point? How can you not recognize? It's willful. It has to be, right? I, I'm not wrong in thinking that yeah. those people, a lot of them are looking at it and going, that I have to try to make it work because it's uh, – I, I, I remember myself thinking along those lines mm-hmm. uh, not that long ago in my life. It's like, all right, let's give it a chance that, that you know, let's yeah. keep trying, uh, but – Really, well, what what's you know, Einstein and, say about that? <laughs> and but, you know, get, yeah. But getting back to to education, I mean, mm-hmm. at least in America, in American public schools, I was only in public schools for junior high and high school. Um, but you know, they like you said, they they get you really young. And one of the myths that they feed kids really early on is the myth of democracy and the myth of representative government. And so you grow up with this, I mean, religious like attachment to this institution. And you're taught that this is, you know, the best that we've ever come up with as humans. And, you know, this represents freedom, this represents civilized society and all this stuff. And, you know, that there's something you know that this is how you exercise your civic responsibility and there's there's such a deep attachment to that i'm not even sure it's a conscious desire to hang on to it i feel like it's it's deeply ingrained in a lot of people well you said it's it's a religion it's a faith uh we got to go into a break and we will be right back with brettany schaefer on toward anarchy if you go to toward anarchy.com let me get a drink of this thing here you know when you talk for when you talk, I was going to say for a living, <laughs> that would be incorrect. Uh, when, when you talk, uh, you realize that uh, how the, how much the weather and how differently the the types of weather affect your your voice and your mouth, just the wetness or dryness of it, or or anything like it, it becomes a thing. <laughs> My guest has been Brettany Schaefer, and if you go to towardanarchy.com, <clears throat> him, yeah. And uh, click on the uh, Sunday's December 15th link or dig through the archive to get there. You will find a link to her book, the website for her book, Annabelle Pickering and the Sky Pirates, the Fantastical Contraption. Uh, 16 children's books that you didn't know were anti-authoritarian. That's her uh, recent article for the uh, Foundation for Economic Education. And uh, a bunch of other stuff that I shared up there as well. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out to come hang out with me. I know you got um, a family thing to go to today, so yeah, you're... my niece, my niece is in the Nutcracker today, so we're we're heading over to see her, and then she's going up on point for the first time, so that'll be exciting. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. I remember seeing the Nutcracker as a young boy, and I remember going to sleep on the floor <laughs> in the eye. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, my husband got out of it this year, so um, well, grandma, I, love it. I love it. I love it now, all that stuff yeah. now, but of course as a small boy. I, yeah, know. no. Well, and, and of course, uh, I was drug up to the, the opera house in um, uh, Central City up above Denver, and so it's a, it's, a, it's a long trip up through the mountain, not a long trip, but for a, a boy it is. Uh, a long trip up through the mountains on the bus with grandma uh, oh, to yeah. watch a long, you know, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> not how you <laughs> spend cool. your day. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to do a lot of things like that thanks to grandma, and that's I think that's um, one of those things that um, uh, free people get to do is to just get on a bus and travel and go somewhere and do what they want to do without uh, so without. What's that? Without showing your papers. Yeah. And, yeah. Without any kind of consideration for authority or what it is that they have to think about what we're doing. Well, and that's actually um, that's 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 something that I'm trying to do in my in my book series is uh, without giving away too much again. Um, it really starts out in a world that is pretty free and where people are able to travel freely and go about their business freely. And then we watch as that changes. So I'm hoping that kind of has an impact on people who kind of take our, the world as it is now as the way it's always been, because it hasn't been, you know, you didn't always have to 
step through a, you know, security checkpoints in order to go from one place to another. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people just don't know what it's like to be free, have never lived in a really free society. Uh, it's interesting because we're those people. We've never lived in a free society, but we, uh, but, but well, we understand it. I came, I came really close because I lived in Hong Kong for seven okay, years. Okay, fair enough. That's a pretty damn free society. I mean, you know, you still have to go through border checkpoints to get into China or to get out, you know, to get in and out. But, you know, compared to here, it's just, it's, it was anyway, I think it probably still is um, a lot more free. But but yeah, anyone you know. People well, I don't know. I mean, you know that there, Hong Kong, there's protesters on the street right now. And yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't want to be there right now. But my guess, I, I left almost twenty years ago, so I really I can't speak. Oh, for it's been now. a big change. The world has changed a lot in twenty years. Oh, I can. Uh, oh yeah. I, I I know that we could talk for hours and hours about just the differences between what it was like when I was 25 versus 45 or oh yeah 26. oh yeah well in the U.S. especially I mean ever since 9-11 really it's and people it who born after 9-11 don't know any different you know no, that's just, just like you were just saying they don't yeah. know any different yeah yeah and and a lot of it is after 9-11 there was a huge yeah. escalation after yeah. 9-11 it, it, it was pretty big after 1994 and and the the whole clinton era and yeah. the, the bombing in uh, uh oklahoma city it, it was pretty big from that point on but 9-11 yeah. really sealed it for the entire yeah nation. it just accelerated it, it really accelerated then yeah well i think it, what it did it, it, it it normalizes. This is what happens. This is what's yeah. happened with yeah. a, a lot of things, and it, it, it becomes normalized. It becomes uh, it, it, like the CIA spying on us thing. It was it, it was in the Simpsons movie in like two thousand eight, <laughs> and then like eight right. years later, ooh, the CIA is spying on you. Yeah, well, I knew that. I watched the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and and that's what happens. It becomes normal. You just sort of accept it. Brittany Schaefer has been my guest. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. We'll be back on Toward okay. Anarchy. And I, I have this notebook. It's just a simple little notebook. I don't know, maybe 60 pages or something. So that puts me about halfway through it. That makes about That makes sense. A little more than halfway through it. And uh, I just jot down stuff. I just keep my pen right here. Pencil. Actually, it's a very nice drafting pencil. Adjustable uh, hardness for the lead and uh, mechanical pencil. It's it's a nice pencil. It's like a $30 pencil. <laughs> it's a nice pencil. Um, I've had it for a long time. And believe me, I didn't pay 30 bucks for it. Um <laughs> I, I just I jot stuff down as I see it throughout the week, and I just always try to remember, and and that always leads me to thinking about how much stuff that I don't jot down, and how much stuff that I think about at any given time that I could try to remember to say, or or I might find sort of interesting, and and thought that you might as well, and and it just it's overwhelming to think about ever trying to be and this is what happens i think with um sort of mainstream media and and these uh, uh media icons um they that start to you know maybe believe their own hype a little bit too much and uh i, I think it happens to them they want to be some they want to be something for everyone you know they have to be they can't just be who they are they have to be a persona. They have to be a show. They have to be an idea. Um, I, w I was watching – this is one of the things that got me to thinking about that this week and about how – why they might get that is because there's so much and there's no way that you can ever talk to everyone about everything and there's no point in even trying to even conceive of, of it. Um, but I was watching somebody that I don't ever watch, uh, Howard Stern. It just popped up on, on YouTube, as things often do, depending on you know, the algorithms that they're playing with and what you happen to be watching and however it comes across. And um, he had interviewed Hillary Clinton here last week, week before, not too long ago, within within a few days. 
And so I was interested to see. I I don't normally watch stuff like that. I have no interest in Hillary Clinton. And I, you know, How, Howard Stern's fine. I respect him for what he does and everything that he's done for freedom of speech, as it were. Um, but I don't necessarily listen to his show, and so there was no reason why I would. But I did, and it was interesting because. I'll tie it in again with this idea that there's a a left lean to everything because, man, if you get past the the constant uh, lisp that Howard Stern has, which, man, really shows up in HD, um, if you get past that, and I'm not perfect, I'll grant you that, but it's like everything with him. It's, it's, It's really annoying. Um, he was just all over Clinton's skirt. There's other ways to put that, but you know what I'm saying is he, his nose was brown. Her cheeks, her backside cheeks were wet from his lips. I, this is what I'm trying to say. I, he, he was just all of that. And they were talking, you know, about politics and, and he's just, oh, you should have won and just all over. And, and it's interesting listening to her because she's she seems like a reasonable human person and that that's what's scary. Because isn't that what you get from the uh the, no no neighbor is ever going to think of that of me in passing. If they know me it'd be one thing. But in passing they're not, they're gonna be oh, that's the guy that carries a, a pistol on his side when he mows his lawn. Uh, they're <laughs> they're gonna think differently of me at that but with with clinton she isn't she right the epitome description of the psychotic right the guy next door that oh seems so normal so nice was, was always so friendly to me seems like a normal person but then you have to read between the lines and you have to listen to what they're saying and, and the things that they support and the ideas that they're behind. And it's it's scary to think that their view of the world, as far as the statism, as far as the socialism, not not the left side of it versus the right side of it and the particular issues that they choose, but the overall general idea that what's going to save the world is – a particular party or a particular individual telling the rest of us by, via the vote, via, via a, a legitimate vote, which uh, what the hell ever that means, because one week the the, uh, the 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 college is great, and the next it's not, depending on which side of the aisle has won an election and and was decided by the electoral college. I you know. Who who you gonna who you gonna argue with? Which one are you gonna argue about? But they're just just it was slimy the way that they just sycophantic, I guess maybe a uh, way to put it the way that he was all over her and just it was it was really disgusting. But then she she comes across as so nice and normal and charming. But then you realize that behind those eyes are the bodies of uncounted people as a politician and as a, a, a sort of gangster individual and and this is just you know i'm not telling any secrets here so don't uh, you know suicide me or anything but i it, it's scary to think that that the normal psychotics can get up in front of you and they can dance a dance and sing a song and y'all will clap along and show up at the polls and vote these psychopaths in to use your money to murder brown people around the world or uh, drug dealers or whatever their excuses. I saw narc, uh, uh, um, uh, cartel land yesterday. I hadn't seen it before. It's the documentary that came out in 2015 about the cartel. There's a little bit – there's a – they pay homage, I guess. And what they did, I think, is they let's get some white people to watch, especially some conservative white people uh, to watch, and maybe some indignant um, uh, leftist white people to watch the the documentary by throwing in some border stuff because the state that they talk about the the majority of the time is nowhere near the border. 
uh, the narco state that they're talking about for the majority of the documentary isn't anywhere near the border. But they 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 talk to some guy, you know, bless his soul, doing what he thinks is right, but to me is entirely deluded. And it's funny at the beginning. My wife actually watched it with me, and at the at the beginning of it, I'm I'm pointing out as they're introducing all these different characters. Uh, they start off with the drug guys, the guys that are actually cooking it out there in the uh, cooking meth out there in the desert, and um, they start with them, and, and and immediately I'm like, well, everything is going to, they're all going to switch sides. That this is what's going to happen throughout the whole thing. They're all going to switch sides. You're not going to be able to tell who's the bad guys and who's the good guys. They're all going to start doing the same thing. And it all goes back to one thing, authoritarian control, authoritarian dictates over drugs. If you take away the authoritarian dictates on uh, illegal drugs, then the cartels go away because they have no way to make money. They have to legitimize and become uh, business people who provide quality product that the market decides whether or not they survive within the market. That's how this thing works. And I said this at the beginning of the movie in so many words to my wife, and she's heard it all before, probably to the point that her eyes gloss over when I start to talk about it. it you know, it, it's no worse than when she comes home and tells me about work, you know, whatever. Uh, it, it just, you know, we've heard it. We all get it. We all know. We've been together for 25 years. I know. You know. <laughs> Let's get on to something real. Let's figure out what's for dinner. Where are we going to go? What are we going to watch tonight? What are we going to do? You know, let's 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 get the uh, the work and the world and all this stuff that doesn't matter out of the way. <laughs> Talk about the reality. Uh, but to, to get back to the Hillary Clinton thing and 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 uh, it was just it was scary because it's the talking part. It's the talking points, right? Um, it's the leftist politics. It's the um, um, the idea that somehow politics has changed over the years. Uh, the only thing that's changed – this was an interesting point, and this was definitely the thing that kept me uh, listening to it and watching the show was um, Hillary started talking about how – seriously? Uh, why would he be calling me? Um, Dude, I'm on the air. Let me call you back, unless it's an emergency. Okay, all right, I'll call you back. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so it's the talking points, right? It's it, it's it, there. Uh, it, it, that kept me listening, though, was the thing that the idea that uh, politics has changed in her time because of uh, social media and because of a narcissism that social media has brought on. These are not words that they use, but these are words that I understand that they were using uh, or meaning. Uh, that they needed to use, I often do that, uh, but they lacked the, the they lacked a certain vocabulary to describe what they were talking about, and I understand it happens all the time, especially in a live setting like that where they're they're live, they're doing their thing, it's not edited, uh, and, and the, it, she started talking about this in in terms of her losing the election, of course, and that it not being important anymore about uh, shaking the hand uh, and and. You know, um, I'm having to deal with such and such problem today, Senator, Congressman, the presidential hopeful. My name's Jim the Plumber or whatever that guy's name was. You know, whatever. It, it's changed in just sort of since that time. Uh, and uh, two, can I get a selfie? Can I get a picture? Can I get an autograph? Can I? So it, there's, and it's funny to have this is why i kept watching it because i don't know how i guess maybe youtube and google would just read my mind it would be one thing if i had just typed it into the phone maybe i said it out loud and i was in the presence of the phone but i was t i had been talking about it thinking about that exact same thing i'm i'm always on this idea of narcissism because i've never understood it i've never wanted it myself i've never uh, indulged in my own character as it were um it was one of the things that they told me when i went to school and we did all the testing and everything and they said uh well why do you want to be a dj personality i wanted to do it then because of the music i didn't understand the ability to talk to people necessarily uh, certainly not like i do now but I, I wanted to be able to talk to people. I wanted to talk to them about music. I wanted to play music. I wanted to share music. But along with that comes an idolatry. Uh, uh, people 
I sort of worship you. I experienced it a little bit. Trust me, I lived the sort of uh, poor man rock star's lifestyle for sure as a, as a DJ and as somebody who's played some instruments and sung with some bands and things like that over the years. So I've I've you know I've enjoyed my um, extracurricular activities and and experiences like that and can and truly speak to it as an idea. Uh, it can just imagine what it would be like if I had, you know, managed to make it to California that time that we set out. Uh, you know, where where I would be as if I had done that as a teenager, like we did. Boy, a carload of us, and we just we didn't quite make it. No, we didn't quite make it. Not all the way. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened if we could have survived, uh, or you know, my just me myself. What would have been different? And just some uh, some of the things, a couple of things here and there over the years that you do and and uh, experience that you can look back on and go, things might have been just a little bit different. You know, I'd probably be dead if I had been able to indulge uh, uh, so much more, uh, the, the type of money – driven lifestyle rock star or something like that uh could have easily done it play blues guitar or any number of things like that uh, and uh, but i i look back on it and i go i would have been dead because i didn't know how to control myself at the time i would have done too many drugs i would have done stupid stuff i still do stupid stuff today please tell me about you know 30 years ago as a teenager uh thinking about you know, wanting to be a rock star or living some sort of um um crazy lifestyle not just be normal and uh, i don't know what's normal that's a scary word to use but the that the hillary clinton thing another aspect of that is is just that the constant talking points and i had mentioned sort of the week before or something like that about how both her and her daughter had been on twitter recently it's a big thing I, if you don't follow it the vaccine issue it's a big deal there's, there's a lot of places Brittany schaefer mentioned it earlier uh in uh, virginia and uh what happened there this past week and what's to, it's ultimately still unfolding and still going on and i i start i wanted to mention it i didn't get a chance to we didn't continue that particular line of the conversation but they stacked the deck she started to it's to mention about how they're manipulating it and and i've talked about this a little bit before at times and that's the the delphi technique and uh, uh different w- w- forms of manipulation of crowds by uh, controllers by a small number of people in in giving them the illusion of participation in things where they ultimately they stack the deck they use uh, professionals and only professional opinion that supports their uh, outcomes in advance of inviting or allowing the the political class the voters to actually participate in it that's the that's the picking the people themselves to run for you in the first place they're they're chosen long before you get a chance to vote in so many cases uh, you know unless you're unless you're one of these people that actually participates in the entirety of the process i did that once uh, well, not in the entirety of it. I dropped out and didn't vote it <laughs> when it all came down to it. Uh, but I played along with some of the fun stuff at the beginning, going uh, local precincting and things like that, and um, getting uh, elected to the state uh, to represent uh, a particular candidate. At the time, it was Ron Paul, in case you're wondering, or if you couldn't have guessed. Uh, just play, That's what I was talking about again earlier in the show, about just – uh, playing along with it and trying to to figure it out. And can you imagine as somebody who hasn't already had uh, an interesting life, not unlike my own, that that has afforded me the opportunity to be able to one uh, take the time with computers to understand them and technology to realize what's going on, and it's given me a huge advantage. They always talk to us about learning a different language. I never learned to speak Spanish or French or Japanese, and I should, and I still should, but I haven't. But I learned to speak computer, and I learned to speak it well. And so I don't need to learn to speak Japanese. I just tell my computer to spit it out for me. Um, but, you know, can you trust the computer? Well, I can because I know how computers work. Can you trust a computer? Maybe not if you don't know how the computers work. That just... I, <laughs> this is it. This is what we get. Uh, a couple more things to talk to you about when we come back here on Toward Anarchy. <laughs> then bad special effects in HD. <laughs> nothing nothing worse at all. No, this is what we get. I was saying before we go, before I went into the break there... 
um, this is what we get. This is the manipulation, the the talking points handed to us by a a particular chosen set of people, and 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 some of them are really crazy. And Howard's talking about how he was how he's uh, had to go to um, get into therapy, and and he's been on this thing where he's been apologizing to people lately about things that he's done, and and it, and, and about the way that he's treated. Him. And I I have to think about that, and I go, wow, you know, if I, I look back on it, there will only be like one or two people that I'd actually have to actually apologize to for you know in in life that i hadn't got a chance to say it to yet and i was thinking about wow what kind of person do you have to be to just abuse people all the time and uh, you look at the the history and of of people uh, narcissistic people like those two particular individuals i guess was the point there's so much more that i came across this week that i thought would be interesting uh, because they, they meant something to me. Married with Children debuted this past week, one of my favorite shows of all time. I, I finally watched a new movie. I hadn't watched any in the last week, and I hadn't talked about that once upon a time uh, in Hollywood. And I guess that's probably the last Quentin Tarantino flick, right? He said he was going to make nine, and I, I believe that was the ninth one. I, you might be able to manipulate the numbers in there, like with Kill Bill 1 and 2. Maybe he goes and says that was one movie. and I, I don't know. I've never counted. I never looked. Um, Bit Club. Oh, this. Oh, we'll have to get into this. I'm not going to have any time to do it about now. Bit Club. Uh, if you know about this, it got busted here this last week, and Bit Club was a uh, digital currency exchange where, well, as it turns out, apparently it's a 722 million dollar Ponzi scheme. And if it's at all possible, uh, I will try to break some interview on that because i actually know some of the people that were involved in it um i know one of the guys that was arrested so we'll see if he comes to me i reached out to him to say you know look as a as someone who knows you i'm not going to judge you uh yeah, prejudge you i want to hear your side of the story and when you can talk about it come to me so hopefully maybe we'll have a real big breaking interview uh here sometime in the in, well we'll see it's it's a big deal 722 million dollar ponzi scheme that's what he's accused of being a part of and then and that that brought up the question about digital gold because there was another article that came out and HSBC uh holds uh like uh uh 38% or something like that, and this is the, this gold that's exchanged on paper or digitally, and 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 there's not enough. There's probably not enough. We we believe this that there's probably not enough uh, actual physical gold. If everybody wanted their gold back or wanted to cash in at one time, Pew Research did a survey, put some numbers together, and came up with the U.S. has the highest rate of single-parent homes with 23%, with the world average at about 7%. But then you start looking at that and thinking about it, and that's not necessarily a bad number. Remember that divorce is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, of course, separating a family, things like a bad, whatever, but the reality of a toxic relationship and children that have to deal with it, I thought that was interesting. So one more thing. That's out there that uh, we don't have enough time to talk about. So there you go. Next week, my guest is Douglas Evans, and we're going to talk about beekeeping and how you could even do it, I bet. So we'll be back on Toward Anarchy next week. Take care. 